Hi, I'm Steve Weyerman, and today I'm going to show you how to do text file I.O. But before we get into uh, that, what I want to do is talk a little bit about some uh, useful uh, structures in uh, Java. So one of them is uh, the Java Bean, and the Java Bean is just a simple Java class that stores information. Uh, it's the sort of object that you think about when you think about objects. I suggest going back to the first video uh, of getting started with Java if you need further clarification on that topic. But I've got a Java Bean here, which is just person. Now this Java Bean has attributes, first name, last name, and phone number. I'm just keeping it simple here. Notice that those attributes are private. This means that those attributes cannot be accessed outside of this class. So any other class that creates an instance of person, that creates a person object, uh, cannot directly access those attributes, those values. Uh, this is a really useful thing because it prevents, uh, it allows us to prevent uh, data corruption. So when information is put into this uh, person object, uh, it, we can check and see that that information is properly formatted. We're not going to do anything fancy with this. We're just going to assume that it is properly formatted. Uh, what we'll do to get to that information is we'll use accessors and mutators, also known as getters and setters. Uh, to get the value, it's just a basic public method, get in this case, first name. Um, and all it does is it returns the value stored in first name. Uh, we have setters as well, set first name, and this allows us to set first name. You'll notice that the setter for this, uh, it's a very different sort of uh, syntax here. We have this dot first name. This dot first name refers to the first name variable that is the attribute of this object. This dot means this object, and now we're referencing that attribute of this object. And the first name over here refers to the method argument first name. And if you're ever unsure of what a variable is referring to, in NetBeans, just move your cursor onto that variable and you'll see that it highlights the name and then highlights all the other references of that name in your class. So these are very straightforward methods. Uh, those are the getters, those are the setters. We also have a constructor. The constructor allows us to guarantee, in this case, that first name and last name are set when the object is created. So this constructor has two arguments, first name and last name. Uh, this means that there will be no, no argument constructor or no zero argument constructors. By default, any object uh, that, uh, or any class has a zero argument constructor. Um, but we don't want that. We want to be sure that at least first name and last name has been set by whoever's creating an instance. And then finally, we have this method, uh, oh, toString. toString uh, is just a method that ensures that when the object is printed or converted to a string and sent to the console or sent to some other streaming uh, data uh, thing, um, that it will be something that's meaningful because when you print out an object just using system.out.println uh, and you don't have a toString method, uh, what you're going to see is some very technical looking stuff that's not terribly helpful for you. Um, so now let's actually use this uh, class. So I've got a, another class here, people database. This is our actual application. It has the public static void main method. And I introduce a few new things here. Uh, first thing is ArrayList. Uh, ArrayList is just 
a class uh, that uh, used, allows us to use arrays in much more intuitive and friendly way than if we were to use just a standard uh, array data type. Uh, you'll see an example of a standard array data type later. Uh, this uses something called a generic. Uh, by default, array list is just a collection of objects. Objects, any kind of object. Um, things that are of type or of subtype uh, that traces back to the object class in Java. Uh, what we have here is we're saying we want all the objects in this array list to be of type person or some subtype of person. Um, so we're going to create that array list and it's going to be called people. We create a new instance of it. And you'll see there is our no arg constructor for array list. Right now that array list is empty. Uh, we're going to create a new instance of scanner. Uh, this allows us to get standard input from the console. Uh, check the last video uh, in this series. And then we're going to ask the user to enter names followed by an empty string. Not a terribly helpful prompt, but we know what we're doing here. And then I've got a few other things going on here. I've got string input, which I don't do much with yet. Uh, and then we've got this do while loop. So this loop here is going to run so long as string input does not equal the empty string. Now, you may notice I initially set that to empty string, but it's going to run anyway at least once because it's a do while loop and not just a while loop. So do while loops always execute at least once. So what are we going to do inside this loop? Well, we're going to create a new instance of person. Uh, we're not actually going to create a new instance of person. We're going to allocate memory for a person variable. And we're going to set that to null. Then we're going to get our input from the command prompt, from, from the console. So again, talked about that in the last video. Then we've got a string array here. This string array is going to be our separated input. So we're going to take our input and we're going to separate it by some kind of token. So that token here is going to be just a space. The user is going to type in a first name, a last name, and optionally a um, phone number. If that array that we got is greater than or equal to two, that means it's at least two. So we have a first name and a last name and we're not going to do any data checking with this. We're just going to assume that the user's typing in things correctly. Then we're going to create a new instance of person with the first name, the first object in our array, and the last name, the second object in our array. And we're going to put that new instance into P. So P is now referencing that new person object. Uh, if it's greater than two, if, our, if the length of that array is at least three, then we're going to assume that the third thing the user typed in was the phone number, and we're going to set the phone number. After all that's done, that person will be stored in the people array list. Once all that's done, we're going to go through and see what got stored in that array list. We'll do that by using a for loop. So here, for person P, this is a new instance of P, notice that 
this P doesn't highlight this. It's a completely different scope. This P only exists in this do while loop, whereas this P here only exists in this for loop. So person P in people. Um, so we're just going to loop through each instance of person in that array list. And we're going to print out P. This will use our two string. And then we'll print out the phone number. If there's no phone number, obviously it won't print anything out. And that's that. If I click run, and I type in that, and I type in the phone number, and I type in another name, I type in another name, and I just hit enter. And you'll see that it printed out name, phone number, name, null, because there was no phone number there, and then name, phone number. And that is a simple example of array list. In the next video, um, this is a two-part tutorial. Uh, so in the very next video, which will uh, come up very shortly, uh, we'll talk about how to write this to a text file and then how to read it from a text file.